absolute panic set in. Grandma couldn't catch her breath and anxiously pressed every button to get out. My grandmother was so fearful of enclosed spaces that even as an elderly lady, she opted to take the stairs. Her claustrophobia was an unwelcome result of the trauma she endured during the anti-Jewish pogroms of 1918 to 1920, when she spent her days hiding in crawl spaces. As a little girl, she was caught in pandemonium as her village evacuated and people ran for their lives. The chaos that she survived shaped fears that haunted her for nearly 90 years. Grandma Anne's story is not about the Holocaust, but rather a prelude, 20 years earlier, of the horror that was to come. She was a young Jewish girl born into a world that refused to tolerate or accept Jews and their way of life. In fact, she lived in a world that did not want Jews at all. As a young teenager, I decided that the intelligent thing to do was to tape record grandma's stories, so that in years to come, I could write a biography of the events leading up to my ancestors' voyage to America. Unfortunately, because of my grandmother's nervousness, the stories flowed better when the cassette wasn't turned on. The minute she saw the tape recorder in front of her, she froze. Grandma Ann finally relaxed after I suggested that she should pretend I was the only one who would ever hear what she said. She began recounting her miraculous tales. And after dozens of hours of successful storytelling, I was proud of myself for having recorded them for posterity. However, posterity didn't last as long as I had expected. Late one evening, when I decided to listen to the many recordings, I realized that the machine had malfunctioned. The tapes were blank. My grandmother, disappointed that so many hours of her storytelling were all in vain, agreed to redo the many taping sessions, while waiting for the bus to arrive at her new condominium in Florida to take her to nightly bridge games. During my many visits with Grandma in the late 70s, I followed her with a microphone in hand, and we bonded at that bus stop. Grandma Anne's vivid accounts of her family's survival during Russia's deadliest wave of pogroms, when estimates ranging from well over 100,000 to nearly a quarter of a million Jews were annihilated during scores of riots that swept across the country, left me searching for answers. I craved more information about this historical nightmare that befell my family in Grandma's childhood town of Stavisht. My curiosity only heightened when I discovered that there was almost nothing published about this time period. As a young newlywed contemplating my own future, I could not help but wonder, where was this mysterious place on the other side of the earth, where my grandmother's world began and then so abruptly fell apart? It was upstairs, in a back room of the historic Free Library of Philadelphia, where I first experienced the exhilaration of pinpointing Stavisht on a map. I stood over an old photocopier with a pile of change and printed out sections of the magnified page from a large atlas that covered a 30-mile radius. I then carefully matched the pages and scotch-taped them all together. With absolute delight, I circled all the obscure villages near Kiev whose names I had heard over and over again during my own childhood. Stavisht, Skibin, Zashkov, Tarashta, Sokalevka, and Belyatserkov. I tucked the map in an envelope, sent it off to Grandma in Florida, and eagerly awaited her reaction. In a letter dated May 25th, 1984, I received a thrilling answer. Dear Lisa, Grandma wrote, I'm getting a big kick reading the map you sent. Where were you able to find a blown up map from the area? I finally saw the town in print where I was born. Now I can confirm that I was really born somewhere. 